In this video, we'll be using integrals to study the relationship between the rate at which a quantity changes and the net change in that quantity over time. We'll see that the key to defining this relationship comes directly from the fundamental theorem of calculus. So in this video, we'll go over these ideas and then we'll be seeing several applications in the upcoming videos. So let's start by reviewing the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that if our function f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and big F here is any antiderivative of little f, then um, our integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. Okay, so let's think about how we can use this um, idea to talk about the net change problem. So suppose that we have our quantity Q that's changing over time at this known rate Q prime. So Q prime here is acting like our big F prime in the fundamental theorem of calculus. Then we can say that the net change in Q between T equals A and T equals B is represented by Q of B minus Q of A. Well, this is going to be equal to the integral from A to B of Q prime of t dt. And so that's exactly what our fundamental theorem is telling us. We can integrate this rate over our interval from a to b, and that will be um, equal to our, our quantity, the antiderivative, um, evaluated at that upper value of b, minus the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit of a. Um, let's just think about this net change problem um, in the context of a particular quantity. So for example, let's say that Q prime is velocity, okay? Then we'll be thinking about an integral from A to B of some V of T dt, okay? So we know that if I, I integrate velocity, um, I should be getting the antiderivative of velocity, which should have to do with position. So let's just see how that works out with some units. If my quantity here was in some sort of units per second and time here is in seconds, then we know that the idea of my I integral here is like a sum of adding up all these different pieces. So I'd, I'd have a sum of these products of a meters per second piece and a seconds piece. So that's like adding up things that have units of meters. So that does um, give my, my quantity of that integral units of meters, which makes sense that I would have a, a distance quantity for that integral. Okay, so let's think about the um, other related application that we'll be um, interested in, which is in finding the future value of some quantity at time t. So given that we have an initial value, q of zero, we can find the future value of um, q using the fundamental theorem. So notice, I'm gonna write where this comes from below, and then we'll fill in this little piece above. Note that if I have an integral from zero to t, of some q prime of x dx. Um, x here is what we call a, a dummy variable because I really want when I plug in my bounds to get something that's in terms of t. So I need to use a different variable inside that, that integral that I'm using on the bounds. So notice that an integral from zero to t of this q prime of x dx using the fundamental theorem would be q of t minus q of zero. So rewriting this, I can say that q of t is equal to q of zero plus the integral from zero to t of q prime of x dx, okay? We can also think of this as the initial value plus um, the change in the value between zero and t. So you're getting what's happening at t by taking the initial and then adding what happens between the initial time and the time that you're interested in. That's exactly what that formula is doing. So this is our general um, formulas here for net change in future value. We're just going to look a little bit more specifically at the velocity um, applications and some of the terminology that we'll find in, in velocity applications. So when we're talking about velocity, position, displacement, et cetera, um, we're gonna let S of T be our position, that'll be relative to the origin, of an object moving along a line at time T. The velocity of the object, we'll call V of T, and that's equal to the derivative of our position function. The speed of the object 
is equal to the absolute value of v of t. So notice that velocity um, accounts for direction. And we'll have sine. So um, we'll have positive direction moving in the positive direction for v of t greater than zero and moving in the negative direction for v of t less than zero. And for a particular problem, you'll need to define, or the problem will need to define, which direction is the positive direction and which direction is the, the negative direction. Um, oftentimes when we're talking about um, vertical motion, we say that the positive direction is up and the negative direction is down, but you need to define that for, for a problem that you're dealing with. When we're talking about acceleration, that'll be our a of t, that's equal to the derivative of our um, velocity. When we're talking about displacement, displacement is just what we call net change in the context of um, position and velocity. So our displacement has to do with um, the difference between where we are at the beginning and where we are at the end of a time interval. So that's our s of b, our position at time b, minus s of a, our position at time a, which is equal to the integral from a to b of s prime of t dt, or in other words, the integral of our velocity function. So that's exactly using the general net change formula, which is, again, an application of the fundamental theorem. Um, in terms of how this would compare to um, a situation where you might have a graph of a velocity function, net change is also the idea of net area. So if I have some uh, velocity function that's positive and then maybe it goes negative a little bit, so this is some um, v of t here. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, if this is some area, um, we'll call this just a1 up here, there's some area a2 here. For this example, my displacement over that whole interval that I've drawn, let's say this is a to b over here, um, would be equal to, let's see, my integral from a to b of v of t dt would be equal to that a1 minus a2. So it's net area or signed area. Okay, so that would be how we would define the displacement there. Um, one other question that we could ask in these, these different velocity related problems might be about distance traveled instead of displacement. So displacement again was measuring your, the change in your position from where you started to where you ended. Distance traveled is looking at the total distance that you traveled over the whole um, interval, not just the difference between your initial and your um, final position. So this is like talking about total area, your total travel there. This is defined to be, um, our distance traveled here, is defined to be equal to our integral from a to b of the absolute value of v of t dt. So we don't care about um, the direction. Here we wanna know what our total distance was. Okay. So, let me give us one other picture to look at. If I had the same velocity curve here, and now I wanted to take that velocity curve and ask about um, distance traveled, I'd think about reflecting this little piece that's below the, um, the t-axis there, and I'd have something like, like this, okay? So here, our, our distance traveled idea would be this integral from a to b of the absolute value of, d, of v of t dt which would equal the sum of those two different regions, okay? In terms of motion of, of a person, we think about these two ideas as if, you know, let's say you're at your, your home and you're gonna go for a walk. So here you are, you're gonna go for a walk in your neighborhood, and you're gonna start at home and then come back to home. Your displacement in that case would be zero because you started and ended at the same place. But if you took a long walk around your neighborhood, the distance that you actually covered in that time um, would be non-zero. So that's how we wanna think about distinguishing those two ideas. So in the last piece here, we'll look at two applications of the 
the future value, so these are both future value type problems. We'll look at how do we find um, the position at some time t given the velocity, and how do we find the velocity at some time t given the acceleration. Well, finding the position at time t is um, found by taking your initial position, your s of zero, and adding to it the change in position between zero and t. So that net change in position would be the integral of your um, velocity. So this will be v of x dx. When we talk about finding um, our velocity at time t given our acceleration, this will be equal to your um, initial velocity plus the change in the velocity. So that will be an integral of the acceleration. So keep watching to see some problems where we apply these ideas.